Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of my today's lecture is xanthomas and abnormalities of the lipid metabolism. First of all, xanthomas. The term xanthoma is derived from a Greek term xanthos, that means yellow. And hence, xanthomas are described as the lesions which gives a yellow tinge because of subcutaneous lipid deposition. All xanthomas contain macrophages, which are loaded with cholesterol and cholesterol esters. And this makes the cytoplasm of these macrophages look foamy. So in dermatology, Histologically, there are two kinds of foamy histocytes. One are the foamy histocytes present in xanthomas, and second are the foamy histocytes which are present in lepromatous leprosy, in which the cytoplasm of the macrophages contain globi or numerous acid fast bacilli. So, coming back to xanthomas, there are a number of clinical types and some of which are associated with hyperlipidemias. Xanthomas are broadly divided into those that are secondary to disorders of lipid metabolism and those that are classed under the histocytic disorders. So we are going to discuss the first variety of xanthomas in this lecture while the second variety of xanthomas are already covered in my previous lectures under non-Langerhan cell histocytosis. So if we classify xanthomas, then the significant or prominent type of xanthomas are the tendinous xanthomas, the tuberous xanthomas. Among these tuberous xanthoma, there is a subtype called as the tubo-eruptive xanthomas. Then the eruptive xanthomas and dyslipidemic plain xanthomas. Among the plain xanthomas, there are further three different types of xanthomas. The xanthelasmas, the plain xanthomas, and the palmer xanthomas. What causes xanthomas? Dyslipidemia causes xanthoma and is classified as primary or secondary. Dyslipidemia is a broad term which is used for all kinds of disorders of lipid metabolism and storage. So the primary dyslipidemias are the dyslipidemias that are present since birth or since early uh, life. And among these primary layer dyslipidemias, there are hypercholesterolemias, familial type, combined dyslipidemias, mainly type 3 dyslipidemias, hyperlipidemias, then hypertriglyceridemia, which is type 1, 4, and 5, then cerebrotendinous xanthomas and cytosterolemias. So these all kind of primary dyslipidemias are associated with cutaneous xanthomas. Then secondary dyslipidemias. Secondary dyslipidemias are the disorders in which the lipid metabolism disorders occur secondary to other medical conditions, such as obesity, diabetes mellitus, insulin resistance, uh, cholestatic liver disease like primary biliary cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome, certain drugs like estrogen, tamoxifen, oral retinoids, prednisolone, and cyclosporin. Then paraproteinemias, which is a cause of diffuse plane xanthomatosis. All these conditions will be discussed at the end of this lecture. The tendinous xanthomas, definition and nomenclature. The tendinous xanthomas occur as subcutaneous nodules or papules in relation to the tendons. 
the tendons and thomas are most frequently seen in familial hypercholesterolemias, which is classified as type 2A dyslipidemias, but are also feature of secondary hypercholesterolemias seen in prolonged cholestasis. So the tendinous xanthomas have two main etiologies. The primary one is secondary to primary hypercholesterolemia and secondary one is related to prolonged cholestasis. They occur in rare lipid disorders like cerebrotendinous xanthomatosis and cytosterolemias. But in both these two conditions, the tendinous xanthomas are not associated with changes in serum cholesterol levels. Clinical features. The tendinous xanthoma occur most commonly attached to some extensor tendon, mainly uh, over the knuckles and the Achilles tendon. Although other tendon can sometimes be affected, in these sites, it can be moved from one side to other because it is attached to the tendon and not to the bone. Occasionally, they can involve the periosteum at the site of insertion of the patellar tendon where it cannot be moved. As the accumulation of cholesterol is deep within the tendon, the overlying skin usually does not give the yellowish tinge. The xanthomas contain collagen in addition to the foamy histocytes and so feel quite hard. This is how the typical tendinous xanthoma look like at the Achilles tendon. Investigation should include uh, the complete lipid profile which is preferably done after 6 to 8 hours of fasting. And here the LDL cholesterol will be high, more than 4.9 millimole per liter. And liver function tests should be performed. The tetanus xanthomas improve with cholesterol reduction, but do not tend to resolve completely. When tetanus xanthomas are painful, the symptoms improve with LDL cholesterol reduction. The second main type of xanthomas are the tuberous xanthomas. They are firm yellow, red or orangish nodule that occur over the sides of pressure, commonly elbow and the knees. The central tuberous xanthoma is surrounded by several small lesions and in a, such a condition is called as the tube. Uh, tubero-eruptive xanthomas. Associated disease. The tuberous xanthomas are usually associated with type 3 hyperlipoproteinemias. Clinically, they appear as small xanthomas usually over the extensor aspects of knees and elbows, but Gradually and slowly, slowly, they develop into quite exuberant exophytic lesions, which may be several centimeter in diameter and in height. They can develop on the pressure sites, particularly the heel and plantar surfaces, and occasionally develop in the bone marrow. The lesions tend to be painless, although it can be itchy, but if they occur on the pressure side, they may be cause of some degree of pain and are susceptible to traumatic damage given to their position. This is how the tuberous xanthomas look like. They appear as several nodules within the dermis and if you see at higher magnification, these nodules are um, filled are uh, uh, occupied by numerous xanthoma cells, which are the macrophages having foamy cytoplasm due to lipid deposition. In later stages, there will be marked fibrosis, 
which is the cause of hard consistency of these nodules. In addition to xanthoma cells, occasionally there are foreign body giant cells containing cholesterol clefts, as seen in the picture. Investigation, the main investigation is the fasting lipid profile. Further investigation include apolipoprotein A genotyping and lipid electrophoresis and ultracentrifugation. The condition respond well to the effective treatment of combined dyslipidemias with which these lesions are associated. Then the third type of xanthomas are the eruptive xanthomas. Eruptive xanthoma appear as multiple small papules over the extensive surfaces. And they are associated with any cause of hypertriglyceridemia, that is triglyceride level greater than 11.2 millimoles per liter. So uh, the eruptive xanthomas are the only xanthomas that are associated with hypertriglyceridemia. The triglyceridemias. The rest, all xanthomas are associated with hypercholesterolemias. These are small xanthomas, consist of yellow papules, 2 to 5 mm in diameter, arising on erythematous base, usually appear in large numbers over the extensive surfaces, particularly buttock, back, leg, and arms. In extreme cases, there are pruritic and more widely distributed, their foamy macrophages contain triglycerides as well as cholesterol. And they result from hypertriglyceridemia, which is almost always accompanied by lipemia retinalis, which is the lipemia retinalis is the creamy yellow discoloration of the retinal blood vessels and lipemic appearance of blood and serum samples. This is how eruptive xanthomas look like. On histology, the eruptive xanthomas characterized by sheets of foamy macrophages, but these sheets of foamy macrophages are different from the sheets of foamy macrophages in lepromatous leprosy by the absence of grand zone in these patients. If we do a fresh frozen section and they would do oil red O stain, then this oil red O stain will stay will highlight the lipid deposition within these macrophages. This stain is not done in uh, formalin fixed biopsy sections. Investigation include the fasting lipid profile and there will be marked hypertriglyceridemias. Glucose level should also be done. Eruptive xanthomas resolve within two weeks after, or so after normalization of the triglyceride levels. Now the last three kinds of xanthomas which are the plain xanthomas. Among the plain xanthomas we are going to discuss the xanthilasmas the plain xanthomas of the body and palmar xanthomas. Xanthilasma. Xanthilasmas are the plain xanthoma they, that develop around the eyes. And the associated diseases with xanthilasmas include familial hypercholesterolemia, type 3 hyperlipoproteinemias, and chronic cholestasis. Will often occur with normal levels of circulating lipids. They are most commonly affecting the upper and lower eyelid and upper eyelid more as compared to the lower eyelid and on the upper eyelid mainly on the medial canthus. They are soft on palpation and range from yellow to orange yellow color. The complications and comorbidity. Although previous small studies failed to identify xanthelasmas as a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, the recent meta-analysis followed for 33 years 
found that xanthal asthma is to be an independent predictor of coronary artery disease, although not of ischemic stroke. So always be careful and warn your patients suffering from xanthal asthma that they stand a greater chance of a cardiovascular event. Investigation, a full blood lipid profile and liver function test. Given their prominent size, xanthal asthmas are often a cosmetic problem and the treatment includes surgical excision, electrocautery, topical TCA, then silver nitrate or the lasers. However, they often recur after the treatment. If the LDL cholesterol levels are high, then treatment to lower the LDL cholesterol with the statin seems sensible. And such treatment is often associated with the regression of xanthal asthmas in hypercholesterolemic patients without the need of any further investigation. Then comes the plain xanthomas. The plain xanthomas are flat, smear-like lesions that occur anywhere on the body. Plain xanthomas are the feature of homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. The xanthomas are wide-based, flat, and develop into raised plaques, can occur anywhere on the body. They can affect the interdigital web, especially between the first and second finger, mainly in homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. Diffuse dyslipidemic plain xanthomas is less common and more widespread. The extensive yellow plaques seen on the scalp and these kind of plain xanthomas should always raise the suspicion of paraproteinemias. The diffuse plain normolipidemic xanthomatosis is a rare form of histocytosis, often associated with paraproteinemia and underlying systemic disorder, usually of hematological or lymphoproliferative type. Then another differential diagnosis is necrobiotic xanthogranda, which is a chronic progressive histocytosis. Plain xanthomas are again associated with diffuse sheets of foamy macrophages. And non-lipidized macrophages are also intermixed. Familial hypocholesterolemia and type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia should be excluded by full lipid profile, serum electrophoresis, and autoimmune screening. Further tests include the skeletal survey and bone marrow examination. Like the tuberous xanthoma, they respond well to dyslipidemic treatment. Then the last type of xanthomas are the palmer xanthomas, which run in the palmer creases. They are pathognomic of type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia, Clinically characterized by orange-yellow lipid deposition running along the palmar creases, occasionally the flexor creases of the wrist. Investigation include lipid profile, fasting, glucose, urine and electrolytes, liver function test and thyroid stimulating hormone levels. Further specialized tests include EPO, E genotyping, lipid electrophoresis and ultra centrifugation. Management respond well to the treatment of cause of type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia. So I am going to end this lecture here and I will take another lecture to discuss the different type of uh, primary and secondary dyslipidemias. So thank you very much and uh, have a good day.